spokesman for the Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, the Ethiopian politician, also an advisor to the acting president of the Tigray region. What did you mean in the last part of that tweet, sir? You mean uh, the um, money-making enterprise part? Mm-hmm. Yes. Look, yeah, Abi, Abi uh, has been ratcheting up uh, genocidal violence against the people of Tigray. And anyone who's, who he thinks is standing in the way of his genocidal campaign. Abi, from the get-go, has never been interested in peace, has never been interested in democracy, has never been interested in reforms. Uh, he was mostly interested in making sure that the entire Ethiopian population uh, cowed into submission, were cowed into submission. So, you know, the Tigrayans, unfortunately for him, stood in the way of his, his um, uh, imperial ambitions. He wanted to be the king of kings of Ethiopia, but unfortunately the Tigrayans stood in that way. Now, uh, after uh, nine, eight, ten months of violence against the people of Tigray, Abi finds himself in a situation where we, he, he has to struggle for his life. Now that he realizes he's not in a position to turn the tide against, against uh, our forces, he is trying to mobilize people, not just against TPLF or against our forces, okay. but more importantly, against very people who are residing in, in other parts of Ethiopia, especially let's, Tigrayans and Oromos. And right, of let's, course, let, let, let's talk about genocide, what's happening on the ground. Uh, Ho hold on for one sec. Well, there, is, there have been reports of atrocities on both sides. Right. Let's be quite clear about that from the UN and the Ethiopian state-run uh, um, Human Rights Council. Over the past couple of days, um, we've seen rebel forces allied to the TPLF advancing on the capital, Addis Ababa. This has led the Ethiopian military to issue a call to veterans to rejoin the army and protect their capital. I want to get from you, where are these fighters right now? And what are the plans to move on the capital. You certainly said it's not an ultimate objective, um, saying we have to break the siege on Tigray and we, and we will do what it takes to break the siege. We will have to do everything in our power that Abiy has unleashed on Tigray. What do you mean by that? And, and, and where are these forces? It's quite simple. I mean, our forces are uh, now in the northern part of Sho, which is very uh, close to the capital Addis Ababa. Like we have been uh, telling the world, again and again, we're not particularly interested in the corridors of power in Addis. We're not particularly interested in territory. We are mostly interested in breaking the siege, which has been imposed by Abiy Ahmed. Once he realized he has failed in his military ambitions to retake Tigray, what he initiated is a reign of terror, especially by cutting of electricity, cutting of communications, cutting of banking services, and all those things. And our children are starving by their scores on a daily basis. By maybe tomorrow by their hundreds and by their thousands, simply because we say no to tyranny, we, our children, are being subject, being sentenced to days, and we have to break the siege. And the rest of the world, it seems to uh, fail to understand how serious the problem is. Humanitarian aid has been blocked from the people of Tigray. Children are dying because of such a blockade, and we have to break this blockade. Right. And we'll, we'll continue last to take hour, appropriate measures hour, to make I sure that the... chokehold on Tigray is broken. Okay. Last hour, I spoke to the Ethiopian government's spokeswoman, right. and when asked about humanitarian access into Tigray, she said it was the TPLF who is blocking aid from getting through. What's your response? Our response is, you know, I will give you an example. When we took Kombolcha last week, we co communicated our intentions to the UN authorities for them to take over operations. We were not particularly interested in taking, taking over warehouses, about 70,000 metric tons of food. The easiest thing for us would have been to carry out operations to help our own people. But we communicated to the UN, and we have been communicating this to the UN authorities, including uh, Under Secretary General Martin Griffiths himself, that we are not particularly interested in taking over UN operations, but we expect them to take over operations. We are trying to break the deadlock. We are working with the UN authorities to make sure that aid reach not only to Tigray, but also other parts of Ethiopia, including Northern Wollo and Southern Wollo, which are under our control, Let, including, okay. of course, the Afar region. We have never been blocking no, aid. It is the government, it's the Abish government, which has been standing in the way of humanitarian aid.
And of course, to the extent that there is a need for ensuring access to food, we have to use our military uh, power to, to arm twist Abis government into into to okay. relenting well, that, on that's, its that, that, on the people that is that is your position. Nine opposition groups, including fighters loyal to the TPLF, recently formed a new alliance in Washington, saying they no longer recognize Abiy Ahmed's government as legitimate and would seek to establish transitional arrangements. What does that look like in reality? And how would the TPLF, who themselves governed Ethiopia with an iron fist, ensure a better future for the country? Well, whatever the superlative there when it comes to uh, TPLF rule in Ethiopia, we know that uh, there are people have issues, you know, but uh, the fact that uh, we are trying to uh, break the siege and, of course, the uh, co concomitant measures that we are going to take simply means that we have to uh, coordinate our resources and our efforts with like-minded organizations. The list of organizations that you have alluded to is, is not an exclusive one. We still continue to work with other organizations which have vested interest in ensuring uh, a stable transition uh, in a post abbey world. We still are ready to, to ex extend Olive Branch. It's not, it's not us, but Abbey, who's been standing in the way of peace. So whatever so we why, do... So why were you we'll not prepared? Sure why were you not Ethiopia prepared to take the, the offer the, of a humanitarian ceasefire back in June? I mean, top Ethiopian government officials have completely downplayed <laughs> rebel advances, claiming they yield little look, popular support. Look, look, um, so, look, so uh, look, Becky, is it a ceasefire that you are looking for at this point? I, I'm just asking. I, I haven't... No, with respect, sir. I'm just putting questions to you. I, I, I'm just putting questions to you. No, no. I'm just putting a question to you. I understand. I understand. How do you respond let, let, to that? Let me respond to it. And are I, you I mean, prepared to take a ceasefire at this point? No, no. You, you see, the, the point is, um, people think that uh, there was a unilateral ceasefire in, back in June. That was an absolute, absolutely false. Because it was only after Abis forces took a beating tried to take advantage of the situation to confuse the world that they were calling for a unilateral ceasefire, where in actual fact they are making preparations to relaunch their, their attacks against Tigray. So we went ahead and neutralized the threat that was that continued to, po to be posed against Tigray. And now that we have pushed Abi's forces uh, all the way to Shoa, which is very close to the capital Addis Ababa, we have been telling the world that we're not interested in power, we're not interested in territory, we're not interested in anything. But as long as there are. And you're not interested afraid, in the ceasefire. Abby's bo uh, it's bombers a, it's are coming. It's a very basic Abby's question. bombers are coming and killing our children, for God's sakes. Well, Abby's, Abby's bombers are killing our children day in and day out, for God's sakes. And we have to make sure that those dogs of war are restrained and will continue to take measures. Otherwise, if there is readiness on the part of Abby's government, to sue for this, we'll be more than glad to, to extend olive all, all branch as well. But for Abi to, 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 to have his cake and eat it too, that's absolutely unacceptable. And we'll continue to take measures as long as there is no intention on the part of Abi. Like you've been saying, he's been calling on the people of Ethiopia to rally against not the PLF, but also the people of Tigray, for God's mm. sake. People are being rounded up in Addis simply because they belong to the Tigray, Tigray nation. Right. The, the Tigray nation. So, Let yes, we have to be responsible enough to take measures to neutralize the threat. The Ethiopian government has accused the TPLF of setting up positions in civilian areas in Michele that are targets for airstrikes. How do you respond to that accusation? <laughs> Look, we, have, we don't have military targets. I, if, if it was targeting me, I would have considered the legitimate military target. But targeting university compounds, mm. targeting civilian residential neighborhoods, that is far from military target. And of course, Abi knows pretty well he was targeting civilians because that's his way of terrorizing people. Now that his, war, his, his, his intentions to terrorize people is not working, he wants to continue. In fact, the other day in Desi, which mm -hmm. is part in, in Wollo, in Amhara region, he targeted the Desi University with drones and uh, fighter planes, bomber planes from, from the Ethiopian Air Force. And they were not military targets, obviously, but he wants to attack and terrorize the people of Orlo for not uh, calling Let's, for his tricks to fight against I wanna, their I want to see whether you, you, I want to get a sense a from you, because that's I'm not getting a sense from you that you see a solution to this anytime soon. 
A, a UN report released last week, and you will be well aware of this, found that both sides of this conflict are in gross violation of human rights. UN Human Rights Chief Michelle Bachelet said the UN had observed, and I quote her here, huge allegations of abuses by the Tigrayan forces since the Ethiopian government declared a ceasefire in June. The Ethiopian government also saying that Tigrayan forces killed 100 youths in a key town on the road to Addis as they advanced last week. I have to ask you, how do you respond to these allegations? Do you, do you categorically deny them? You know, uh, I, category, I categorically reject the so-called report by UN High Commission for Human Rights because it was practically written by Daniel Bekele, who is the head of the UN human, the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, which, which works for Abiy Ahmed and company. Having said that, though, we have been consistent... I spoke to the UN co-writer of that report, who, who and we are said it is absolutely impartial. The UN didn't conduct... Becky, the UN didn't conduct in, in, in independent investigation. In fact, they clearly mm. admit to having missed out on the opportunity to investigate areas which they should have investigated. So I categorically reject it. But having said that, we are still open for an independent investigation. But I don't think Abi is ready for that kind of investigation. With regard to the, the so-called killing of 100 youths in Kombolcha, it's just a figment of some, some, some Addis Ababa officials' imagination. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. It simply didn't happen. So if the, there are allegations mm -hmm. that this indeed happened, we are more than willing to, to extend our cooperation for an independent investigation. That you don't think we'll find uh, from, we, from Abiy's government side. We are hearing officials in many places around the world, not least in Washington and in London, uh, sounding the alarm, cautioning that a civil war may be on the horizon. Um, is that what your expectations are at this point because there is nothing in what you have said to suggest that the TPLF will agree to a ceasefire at this point. I, I would have thought the civil, 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 I don't know whether to call it civil war, but that's a genocidal campaign by Abiy Ahmed ha, has been in full swing to the extent that there is going to be an issue. It is that the international community has failed miserably to take appropriate measures against a regime which has perfected genocide and genocidal campaign into an art form. Civil war is an understatement as far as I'm concerned. We know for a fact Abiy is trying to ratchet up violence against not just only Tigrans, but also other people who are not willing to fight his, in his desperate cause. And he's been taking all kinds of textbook examples of um, uh, repression and killing and uh, tyrannical measures, including a state of emergency, which gives carte blanche for his security officers to, to jail people at will. And if this is not civil war, if this is not genocide, you... nothing is. With that, we'll leave it there. We thank you very much indeed for joining us with your perspective.